How's it going guys and welcome back to the channel. The point of this video will be very straightforward. PlayStation Experience 2016, also known as PSX 2016, is going to happen soon. And the list of exhibitors slash companies confirmed to appear at PlayStation Experience has been posted. While this list was actually posted a short while ago. Although some companies are absent from the list, it doesn't necessarily mean that they won't show anything. I'm talking about Square Enix and Insomniac Games, for example. This list you see right here it pretty much confirms the companies which will have panels slash playable demos. So again guys, if you don't see a company on the list, it doesn't mean that nothing will be shown. And just to confirm one thing with you guys, although the event is called PlayStation Experience, it doesn't mean that all games are PS4 exclusive. So by quickly looking at this list, two things or maybe three caught my attention. Activision, Sony Interactive Entertainment Japan Studios, and Team 17. Naughty Dog? I'm not too sure. Oh wait a second. Sucker Punch is working on a secret project, right? They're absent from the list, but like I just said, it doesn't mean that nothing will be shown. So who knows what will be shown? No one knows. Now some of you might ask, dude, do you know anything about their secret project? Not really. Only that, two years ago, they were hiring. And according to their description, I know this is old, but it could still hint towards something. They were looking for someone who had the ability, the experience, to work on third-person melee combat. Anyways, back to the point. I'm gonna go over games I'd like to see at PSX 2016. So yeah, pretty simple, right? With that being said, let's get right into it. Okay, first game I'd like to see, Spider-Man PS4. This is Insomniac Games' upcoming game. Insomniac is the one who brought us Ratchet and & Clank and Resistance. That right there gets me hyped up. Knowing that Insomniac Games is working with Marvel to bring us a brand new Spider-Man game, it's awesome. I'm gonna buy it for sure. As for extra details, we don't know that much. No official release date yet. All dates you may find on websites or whatever, those are just placeholders. Do not get mistaken. For example, GameStop. It states December 26, 2017 as the release date. Guys, that's just a placeholder. Nothing has been confirmed by Insomnia Games. But there's a lot of speculations going on. Some are expecting a spring 2017 release. But those are just rumors. Nothing confirmed, guys. When the game first got announced at E3 2016, Insomnia Games explained that the game was already over one year in development. So what do we know? about this new Spider-Man. Apparently, according to Insomniac Games and Marvel, he's fully mastered his skills, he's experienced. Now guys, this upcoming Spider-Man PS4 game has nothing to do with Spider-Man Homecoming, which is set to release on July 7th, 2017. The game has its own universe. For those of you wondering about Spider-Man's origin story, no, it will not be in the game. This was confirmed by Insomniac Games. As for any sort of new footage, apart from the awesome E3 trailer, well, we did get a brief scene during the PlayStation meeting 2016, when Sony presented the PS4 Pro and the Slim. Talking about the PS4 Pro, Spider-Man PS4 will support 4K. We also got small footage during the latest PS4 promo trailer. We saw Spider-Man swinging around in New York City. Now the question is, will this game be shown at PSX? Insomniac Games hasn't said no, they only said that they haven't announced it yet, so who knows. Again guys, although Insomniac Games is not listed, it doesn't necessarily mean that we won't get anything. If we do get something, that'll be awesome. But the thing is, Insomniac Games is pretty much still in heavy development, so I guess we'll have to wait and see. Next, Ukulele. Now this is one game I am definitely going to pick up. It's an upcoming platformer, also known as Banjo-Kazooie's spiritual successor. It's being developed by Platonic Games. Now guys, I grew up with platformers. Once I saw Ukulele, I was like, this is what Banjo 3 was supposed to be like. People who worked on Banjo-Kazooie are part of Platonic Games. It even shows. Anyways, what do we know about ukulele so far. It's planned on getting released in the first quarter of 2017. As for physical copies, it has been confirmed. The game is going to get physical copies for the Wii U, PS4, and Xbox One. As for the worlds, we all thought that the game would have perhaps five worlds, but there's the possibility of six. And what do we know about the worlds? So far, there's a tutorial level slash intro world called Shipwreck Creek. It's their home. We have a hub level called Hyvary Towers. We have Glitter Glaze Glacier, that snowy world, and Tribal Stack Tropics. We've seen a bunch of gameplays in that world. As for the other worlds, that's what I'm hoping to see during PSX. There's some rumors going on in discussions. People think that maybe a swamp world might be shown next. Now Highbury Towers, like I just said, it's a hub world. There's going to be a bunch of worlds we can visit within that hub area. I don't know if you guys noticed, but the hub level has some areas which pretty much blend in with the worlds. And some places kind of hint us towards a swamp world. Anyways, if we do get a brand new gameplay trailer, I'm hoping they reveal a brand new 
world. So Platonic Games, they've gone through a very successful Kickstarter, so pretty much the team is taking their time. They want the game to be great, they want it to be excellent. Platonic Games wants backers to fully enjoy the game, they simply don't want to disappoint. About the list, we do notice Team 17, which is the publisher. Ukulele, I'm assuming, will be playable at PSX. If so, I'm pretty sure that we will get something new. If they don't show anything, I'm honestly going to be very surprised. If they do show something new, maybe they might throw in the release date. That will be cool. Next, Skylar and Plex Adventure on Clover Island. What can I say guys, this is another platformer game. Right Nice Games are the ones who are developing the game. It's going to be published by Grip Digital. This game has been worked on by 5 people. It started off as a simple school project. It got an award in Sweden and pretty much after that, they decided to release the game. It's planned to get released on the PS4, PC and Xbox One. As for physical copies, we are still waiting on news, we don't know. For the release date, it's unknown, but Right Nice Games explained that the game will get released in early January. What do we know so far? There's going to be three main worlds, which are going to be pretty massive. Some of you might say, oh that's too little, but no. There's going to be a lot of gameplay, don't worry. There's going to be one intro slash tutorial area and a hub world. CRT Space Station is the intro world, CRT is the main villain of the game, Siphon Valley is the hub. We haven't seen Siphon Valley yet. Clover Mountain, Forlorn Desert and CRT Citadel, those are the three main worlds in the game. We did see Forlorn Desert, I'm assuming it's the gameplay right here, in the desert. Makes sense, right? CRT Citadel, we got a screenshot. As for Clover Mountain, I think we did get a bunch of gameplay. As for CRT Space Station, we did get a small gameplay. Now look, right nice games, Grip Digital, they're not listed. But we could get a new trailer and they did say to stay tuned. Next, here's something that was very unexpected. Now a lot of people wanted this. Well technically they wanted a sequel, but Sony and Activision are working together to bring us a Crash remake. Here's what happened. At E3 2016, Sean Layden showed up on stage and Crash Bandicoot music started playing. When I heard the music, I pretty much fanboyed, okay? Sony announced that they partnered with Activision to remaster from the ground up. Remaster from the ground up. There was a lot of confusion going on, but I think it simply means remake. Crash 1, Crash 2, and Warped will be fully remade for the PlayStation 4. These three games were originally developed by Naughty Dog. As for updates, we have absolutely no idea what's going on, only that it's going to get released in 2017. Since Activision is on the list, I believe it's a good time to reveal a trailer. Now it's going to be exclusive to the PlayStation 4. Vicarious Visions, the one who brought us Crash Bandicoot Purple and Spyro Orange, which are crossovers, they're the ones who are going to be working on this remake. So yeah, I'm hoping we see something that has to do with the Crash remake. Next, now this one might sound very obvious, it's my favorite game, Kingdom Hearts 2.8. They could at least show one last trailer. It's planned to get released on January 24th, 2017 for the US. Judging by all the new screenshots we got, Kingdom Hearts 0.2, which is part of 2.8, is going to have three playable worlds, I'm assuming. We don't know anything. That's Dwarf Woodlands, The Enchanted Dominion, and Castle of Dreams. As for more worlds, like I just said, I don't know. Who knows? It's going to be a short game. It runs on the Unreal Engine 4. Pretty much, it gives us a feeling of Kingdom Hearts 3. The length, it depends on your style of gameplay. If you want to take your time, level up, explore the areas, then you should expect a lot of gameplay. As for 60 FPS or anything like that, Dream Drop Distance, which is part of 2.8, will run at 60 frames per second. 2.8 will be supported on the PS4 Pro, so the game will be getting a patch at launch or even before. Back Cover is going to be a one hour long cinematic. Those who haven't played Unchained Key, it's perfect. Now the story is told from the perspective of the foretellers, and according to Square Enix, it fills up the time gap between Birth by Sleep, Kingdom Hearts Key, and again guys, Square Enix is not on the list, but they could show something. At least one last Kingdom Hearts 2.8 trailer. Anyways, maybe a lot of you have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about. Kingdom Hearts 2.8? What is 2.8? Anyways, I want to cover something extra, and it has to do with something that's very likely not going to be shown at PSX. And what is that? A brand new Ratchet & Clank collection for the PS4. I would absolutely love Sony to allow a developer to bring all of the future games onto the PS4. That includes Tools of the Destruction, Quest for Booty, and a Crack in Time. If they can fit in 4 games, why not throw in Into the Nexus as well? As for the classic ones, they could also bring it to the PS4, why not? But like I said, it's all up to Sony, and no, Insomniac Games usually doesn't handle HD ports. And talking about the classic collection, if they do bring it back for the PlayStation 4, fully updated and fully patched, then I'm sure a lot of fans will be absolutely happy. Especially if they decide to throw in Deadlocked as well. Now Deadlocked, that game, 
when you're playing on co-op. It's very laggy, very glitchy. A fully patched, deadlocked for the PlayStation 4. Now that would be something awesome. Okay, now some of you probably haven't realized this, maybe you don't follow Insomniac Games on Twitter, but these days they've been posting a bunch of Ratchet and Clank pictures. 13 years ago, 14 years ago, they showed Going Commando, the original game, up your arsenal, deadlocked, into the Nexus. Are they hinting us towards something? Fun fact, Insomniac Games would love the future saga to end up on the PlayStation 4. Who knows, maybe Sony might surprise us. Then again, they did the same thing for Spyro 1 and Spyro 2. They posted pictures on their Twitter page. Once people saw that, they started thinking that maybe Insomniac Games was hinting towards a remake. And guess what Insomniac Games said about that, guys? Guess what? No. Activision gets to decide what to do with the series. Alright, back to Ratchet & Clank. For those of you wondering, what if they reveal a brand new sequel? Way too early, Insomniac Games is currently busy with Spider-Man. Plus, on their Twitter, they said that they have no future plans. For now. But they are still interested with Ratchet & Clank. So do not worry. Plus, the PS4 reimagining did sell well, so we are definitely going to get something new in the future. Next. If Sony announces this, then a lot of fans will probably freak out. And I'm talking about Sly Cooper, not necessarily Sly Cooper 5. I know that Cliffhanger is just awful. Sly 5 would be absolutely amazing. But what do you think of the possibility of Sony announcing a brand new PS4 collection, which would feature all four games, Sly 1, Thievius Raccoonus, Sly 2, Band of Thieves, Sly 3, Honor Among Thieves, and Thieves in Time. Why not put all four games on one disc? Why not bring back all the fans together and and why not give the series a little bit more exposure? It's a great series, it deserves it. While a lot of people are waiting for Sly Cooper 5, why not release a collection for the PS4? Okay dude, let me tell you something. Sly Cooper 4 didn't sell that well. You gotta be a little bit realistic here. Why would Sony waste their time and greenlight another Sly Cooper project? Here's the thing, Sony should test the series. At least release a brand new collection. Not only will fans absolutely enjoy that, but casual viewers might perhaps also get into the series. Why not test it? Just to see if it's gonna capture any attention. And it will, with the right marketing tools. Here's something that might be absolutely great. Great. Imagine Sony greenlighting a brand new collection. Imagine throwing in a Sly Cooper 5 teaser in there. Imagine the fans reaction. I'm just saying. Okay, but but what about Jack? What about Jack and Dexter? On December 3rd, it's going to be the 15th anniversary of that series. If Sony decides to allow a brand new collection for the PlayStation 4, then awesome. Plus, PSX begins on December 3rd. Imagine Sony announcing a collection on that day, knowing that it's the 15th anniversary. About not Dog, I mentioned them in the beginning. Let's imagine a brand new collection for the PS4. If it gains enough success, Sony might greenlight a sequel. And who will work on that sequel? Not Naughty Dog. They're simply no longer interested. Some months ago, they tried bringing it back. They tried making the game look realistic. But they realized that no, it's not gonna work out. And plus, the team is not like it used to be. A lot of people moved on. And the best thing they can do with Jack and Dexter is to let another developer handle it. That that is it, that is all. If they do decide to bring a collection, they could perhaps include Daxter, which is on the PSP. Anyways guys, I said what I had to say. What would you like to see at PSX 2016? Do you agree with the idea of a brand new Sly Cooper collection? Or Ratchet & Clank? Or Jack & Dexter? Are you looking forward to the possibility of Spider-Man PS4 being shown? Tell me what you think in the comment section below. And as always, I've been Vivi, and thanks for watching.